Imagine a world where creating connectors could literally just take minutes and you don't need any coding experience for that matter. What? I say you're full of shit. There's no way. Wait, but like, actually, are you, are you, is this possible? Are you being serious right now? No, like, yeah, seriously, I'm being for real. Like, this is possible. By the end of this video, you're going to see the true power of our new low code method and how you can literally spin up a connector in just minutes. Keep in mind that this is in very early alpha stages. So we're actively testing and would love to get your feedback on this if you're willing to test with us. I also just want to note that just because we say low code doesn't necessarily mean that this is catered towards people who don't have as much coding experience. We want to make the experience of building connectors a lot more efficient and faster for you and take away a lot of the headaches that you may deal with when building connectors from scratch. We wanna make this even better for you and give a much better experience. But anyways, let's get started. So we'll be creating a custom connector using the exchange rates API. But before that, make sure that your environment is up and ready to go. If you haven't set up your environment just yet, you can check out one of these two videos for Mac OS and Windows to set it up to work with Airbyte. And then once you're done with those videos, you can come right back here. So go ahead and set up an account with the exchange rates API. And then once you have that done, we can get our free API key. Once we have our API key here, then we can clone Airbyte locally and start developing our connector. All right, so I'm gonna make a directory called low code. I'm gonna CD into low code. And then I'm going to git clone the Airbyte directory into this directory here. Once it's in there, then we'll get started generating our load code connector. All right, now that it's done, we'll CD into Airbytes and then open this up in my code editor. We actually have a directory for the code generator that will bootstrap the scaffolding of our connector. So we're gonna go into Airbytes hyphen integration, connector templates, and then generator. So once we are in that directory, then we can do dot slash generate dot sh. So as you can see, this brought up an interactive helper application inside of the terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and select the configuration based source template, which is gonna generate a source that is described using a low code configuration file. Now it's asking us for our source name. I'm going to name this exchange rates API. Hit enter. So if you look onto the right hand side in our file browser, you can see that we've made a modification here. If we go into down this file path, we can see that source exchange rates API. This directory has just been created for us by the application helper. And so now we can start working on our connector within this directory. So now let's CD into that directory. So let's get out of this, get out of this CD into the connectors directory and then CD source exchange rates API. Once we're in there, we're going to spin up our virtual environment using Python, Do Python dash M space VNV dot VNV. And then we'll do source dot VNV slash bin slash activate. And then we'll do pip install hyphen r requirements.txt and let those build our dependencies. Now, if we open this up, we should see our requirements.txt inside of this directory. Let me go ahead and clear this. This is a required step, so make sure you do not skip this. Now we can verify that everything's working by running this one command. I'm gonna say python main.py and then the spec operation. And it's just spit something out for us and then we know everything is working just fine. Next, we're gonna connect our API to the connector. So if you go into the subdirectory of the main connector directory here, you notice that the files are mainly YAML files and that's what makes this method so fast. We're simply gonna be modifying the boilerplate found in these YAML files to fit our needs and it doesn't require any Python code or anything like that. Your connector's simply gonna be spun up by the configuration set inside of the YAML file. So first let's head into the spec.yaml file and update the spec there, as well as the config.json files. That way our connector can use both the access key Key, as well as the base currency that we want to set it to. Obviously, this information is going to differ depending on the API you're using. The first thing I'm going to do is inside of this required field, I'm going to change this. I'm going to put access underscore key as well as base, which will represent our base URL. Inside of the properties field here, I'm going to take out the to do as well. And this will be our properties that 
a user has to input in order to authenticate and use this connector. So the first one is obviously going to be our access key. The type will remain a string. As for the description, you're gonna input whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this string in. And then another flag that we want to add is going to be airbyte underscore secrets, which is a Boolean, which we will set to true. And remember with YAML, spacing is very, very crucial here. So make sure you're in line with all the other fields. The next one we're gonna to need to add is the base property. The type of this will be a string as well. The description, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this description in. And then another flag that we're gonna have just to help people out is the examples field. One example is going to be Euro and then the other one will be USD. Now that our spec.yaml is fully filled out, we're going to go ahead and save that. We will also fill in the connection config.json, which is found inside of the secrets directory. So inside of this folder is going to be both of the properties that we filled out, which is gonna be the access key as well as the base currency we want to use. Now remember, as long as it's in the secrets folder, don't worry about leaking any API keys as the secrets directory does not get committed since it's in our git ignore file. The first one we're going to add is going to be access underscore key. I'll paste my access key here. And the next one would be the base and our base currency should be USD. And remember, I listed these as strings, depending on what type that you're using inside of your properties, make sure you are inputting them correctly. We go ahead and save this. Now let's head down and update our connector definition, which is going to be found here. It should have the name of your connector and it should end in the .yaml file type. If we scroll down and on line 29, we see the streams here. The default stream was set to customers. Let's rename that and turn that into rates. Our primary key that we want instead of ID is going to be date. And then we'll also go down to the check section here. And instead of customers, we're going to change this to match our rates stream. Adding the rates stream that we have listed up here to the check block simply means that when you are checking your connection to the API from your connector, we're going to make an API call using the rates stream. And if everything is looking good and we get a 200 back, then we know the connection is healthy and successful. If we scroll up a little bit into the actual definition itself and we see the retriever level right here, we can add our base URL. So let's go ahead and add that in. According to the documentation, the base URL is going to be this. So let me go ahead and paste that in. If we scroll back down to the streams, we can see that in the retriever level, we have a path property here where we can add our endpoint path. What we can do is actually use the slash latest endpoint from the API to fetch the latest data. So let's go ahead and add that endpoint here in the requester path. So it's simply going to be slash exchange, exchange rates underscore data slash latest. Go ahead and save that. Now that we have our stream all set up, let's get some authentication rolling. The exchange rates API requires the access key be passed in as a header named API key. We can configure the API key authenticator to point to the config.json's access key field. So if we scroll up to the authenticator section, it's currently listed as the bearer authenticator, but let's go ahead and replace this with API key authenticator. And then down here, we have a header property that we can add, and that will simply be API key, since that is the name that the API requests. And then inside of the API token, the name we gave it was access key. So let's change that to match and go ahead and give that a save. Now, remember, we set a base currency that you can actually select and use to get specific data back from the API. If we go back into the requester level here, we can actually add another property here after the authenticator, and that's going to be request underscore options, underscore provider. And what this will let us do is it'll let us add any request params that we need in order to query specific data from the API. So let me add the request underscore parameters field here. And inside of this, I'm going to add our base, which is the name of the property we added in our spec. And we're gonna have it point to config slash base which matches the name of our base property inside of config.json, which right now is set to USD. Let's go ahead and give that a save and open up our terminal again. Now that we've gotten to this point, let's run the check operation to verify that the connector is indeed reaching the API successfully. So I'm gonna go back into my terminal. I'm gonna copy and paste this command in and don't worry, I'm leaving all the commands you need to run in the description below. And as you can see, we are successfully reaching the API as our connection status is succeeded. 
Now that we've confirmed that we can reach the API, let's go ahead and read some of the data from the source. Let's go ahead and add the stream that we just created to the configured catalogs inside of the integration test directory. And we're gonna to go to configured catalog.json. In the stream name, we're going to replace customers with the stream we just created, which was called rates. The configured catalog also declares the sync modes that are supported for the stream. So as you can see, Full refreshes here, but if we wanted to support incremental sync, we could also do that down here as well. If you want more information on the difference between full refresh and incremental sync, make sure to go down in the description below and check out our docs for more information. We can also go ahead and delete the employee stream since that is not relevant to us and give this a save. Now let's go back into our schemas directory down here and create a new file and we're going to name this rates.json. So for the schema of this connector, I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in, but I will leave the link to this also in the description as well. So you don't have to type this all out, but this is the schema for all currencies that come back from the API. So essentially you're just going to have to match the schema of the API you are working with. I'm going to go ahead and save this. We can also delete both of these JSON files as well, since these are not streams that we are using. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste this command in there, delete this dollar sign. And this essentially is our read operation. And we're reading the data that comes back from the connector that has been configured inside of our configured catalog.json using the keys found inside of the secrets. So let me go ahead and run this. And as you can see, data does come back inside of our terminal and that we can see we've read one record from the rates stream. So we can confirm that we are now successfully reading data from our source API. We've successfully created a working implementation of a connector that reads the latest exchange rates for a given currency, and it didn't take all that long. We just had to input some data from our API, make sure everything was in the correct place, and now we're successfully reading data. This was only part one of a two-part series. In the next part, we're gonna learn how to implement incremental sync to this, as well as run some tests to make sure that everything in terms of the configuration is set properly. If you would like to test this yourself, there will be a link in the description for a signup survey. Now remember, this is in very early alpha stages, so expect bugs and expect problems, but that is why we are opening this up to the public. We want feedback from you as the users, and we want to improve this product as much as possible. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out in our community Slack, as well as our discourse for any technical questions. But anyways, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.